It's Sunday afternoon on TCM. I'm Alicia Malone. And next we have one of the many film adaptations of Oscar Wilde's classic story, The Picture of Dorian Gray, which he first published as a novella in 1890, then as a book in 1891. We're showing the 1945 version produced by MGM, which is creepy and compelling, adapted and directed by Albert Lewin. He made some changes to Wilde's original story, namely creating a secondary romantic subplot involving characters played by Donna Reed and Peter Lawford. But he kept the main plot, which follows a handsome yet selfish man named Dorian Gray who trades his soul for eternal youth. Given Peter Lawford's good looks, you'd think he would be a great choice to play the lead, but instead an actor named Herd Hatfield was picked. He was a theatre actor, with this being only his second film role and his biggest to date, but as you'll see, he created a truly sinister Dorian Gray. It's no wonder this role became the most memorable of his long career. Also in the cast, and near the start of her film career, is Angela Lansbury. This was her third role, which gave her a second Oscar nomination as Best Supporting Actress, following her nomination for Gaslight. The Picture of Dorian Gray won one of its three Oscars for the cinematography by Harry Stradling, and Lansbury lost out to her National Velvet co-star Anne Revere. But on this film, Lansbury won a lifelong friend in Herd Hatfield. The two remained close over the years, with Hatfield inadvertently introducing Lansbury to her second husband, Peter Shaw, when he arranged for Shaw to give Lansbury a lift to a party he was throwing. Fast forward several decades later, and Shaw was producing the TV show Murder, She Wrote, which starred Lansbury, and Herd Hatfield was hired to appear in three episodes as different characters, though not the episode where Lansbury sings her song Goodbye Little Yellow Bird that she originally sang in this film. Here are Hatfield and Lansbury alongside George Sanders in The Picture of Dorian Gray. A brilliant and startling use of Technicolor in the picture of Dorian Gray, and that terrifying portrait was painted by artist Ivan Lee Lorraine Albright. Writer-director Albert Lewin had seen his work at the Art Institute of Chicago and hired him to create several paintings for this film, each one showing the degradation of Dorian Gray. Directing a version of Oscar Wilde's story was apparently a long-held ambition for Albert Lewin, and helped to bring him back to MGM. Lewin had worked with the studio from its beginning, transitioning from being a reader at Samuel Goldwyn's studio to a screenwriter at MGM, to becoming Irving Thalberg's personal assistant and the head of the MGM story department. When Thalberg died, Lewin went to Paramount, but was lured back by Mayer in the early 1940s. Okay, don't go anywhere because next is a film very much inspired by paintings. It's a truly gorgeous movie directed by Stanley Kubrick and starring Ryan O'Neill.